Celtic tribes that inhabited the northern slopes of the Alps. Traditionally, mountain dwellers blew the horn to announce daily activities, such as roundup time for livestock. As modern communications reached those altitudes, the horn's role became strictly musical. An alpine horn's sound travels about eight kilometers, thanks to the instrument's length and shape. Following a centuries-old tradition, the hornmaker harvests spruce at a specific time in the lunar calendar, when tree wood is supposedly most resonant. Once the spruce logs dry out, which takes at least nine years, he saws them into planks. Then he traces and cuts out the shape of the horn's curved bell twice, once for each half. He measures and marks how much wood he must hollow out with his drill press. It's tricky because from top to bottom, the bell's inside cavity progressively widens and deepens. Next, he runs glue along the perimeter of both bell halves, then joins them with a sheet of newspaper in between to prevent a permanent bond. He'll have to pry them apart later to finalize their shape. Once dry, he tears off excess newspaper, traces the circumference of the bell's top and bottom openings, then measures and draws the bell's shape between those two openings. Once again, following the lines he drew, he cuts out the shape. To check his work, he uses a series of sizing templates. He lines them with charcoal, then slips the first template onto its designated position at the top of the bell. The charcoal marks any wood that he still needs to shave off. He repeats this procedure with each template, working his way down until the bell is rounded to the proper external dimensions. Now for the bell's internal dimensions. The horn maker detaches the halves. He scores a line running the length of the bell half on each side. This marks the inner wall thickness he's going to create. Using a grinder with a rough grit abrasive, he wears away the wood right up to the score lines. The holes he made earlier tell him how deep to grind. Then he switches to a finer grit abrasive to grind the walls down another millimeter. He checks his work with a measuring gauge, then glues the halves together again, this time permanently. The horn maker constructs the bell's other section in halves as well rounding them off on a lathe. He coats them in glue and wraps them in rattan. The rattan solidifies the structure somewhat, but is primarily for decoration. Once the glue dries, he'll glue aluminum connecting dowels to each section. These will enable the musician to assemble and disassemble the horn parts. The bell is truly the alpine horn's showpiece. Hornmakers typically embellish it with painted scenes or motifs. This horn will boast a colorful bouquet of traditional Swiss flowers. assembled, an alpine horn is between three and four meters long, the length determining the pitch of the instrument. Musicians use lip movements to modulate the vibration of the air column inside. Different vibrations produce different notes. <laughs> 